This week I fixed this annoying lighting problem which had been in the game for about a year. I had known about it for a while but I kind of just decided to live with it. But no more. Now it's fixed, the game's looking way better, and also I've done an unhealthy amount of code refactoring and my brain has just sort of turned to mush. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a procedurally generated world. You discover things, collect items, kill monsters, and we're also going to be doing a bit of work on the map gen system today, which is good. Because this is a procedural game. I need to do that. As expected from all my troubles last week, it was going to be something pretty simple. I just had to figure out how simple and where the problem actually was. Like, look at this. See how the light doesn't really match the scene at all. This was more obvious in places like the insides of houses because you just kind of end up with walls and placed objects just looking wrong. So this all began when I moved my normal definition to be defined in the shader rather than the vertices itself. As I'm dealing with cubes, there can only be one of six possible values, so I can literally reduce 12 bytes per vertice down to just three bits. But this was where the problem actually started. I spent a while last week just going through shader data tables and calculating matrices by hand to try and work out what was actually going wrong. Turns out that the problem was actually way simpler than the things I thought it could be. In the end, it was actually just a one character change right here. Basically I grabbed my three bits from the packed unsigned integer by shifting it and then masking it. The problem was that my mask was wrong. This is just two ones. I actually needed three. So my hex number should have just been this. By missing that off, I only get to count as high as three. And if you try and go any higher, it just ends up resolving back to zero. So when I come to reference the array, like the whole thing doesn't necessarily break. It just reads the wrong normal value. And there we go, an entire day gone because I just assumed it would be something more complicated than it actually was. With all that changed, the game honestly looked way better. It's such a subtle change, but it honestly just means everything looks way better. And the game just feels less alpha, which is what we always want. So aside from that, the main thing I've been working on this week is the total refactor of the map gen system. I've been doing this refactor sort of piecemeal for the past few months to basically allow the map gen logic to be able to incorporate scripts into its previously fully C++ work. The thing that kind of complicates this is that the map gen system all happens on a different thread and also the scripts themselves need to be able to access the data in a way that like isn't super convoluted. And that was the main point of this rework, to make the scripts able to access the data types a bit better. So here's an example. Right now, if I was to create the desert biome, for instance, it has to be in the C++ native plugin, which only gets compiled once and I can't really change later on if I want to do things like modify some of the code. Obviously, I could try and pass flags and stuff into it, but that's really not that flexible or scalable and to be honest, I think I could just do better. Instead, I've created this sort of data container system where values which are previously just like baked into C++ data structures are now defined in this sort of like key value pair system. So you can just reference the data structures by some sort of key and get hold of them that way. The data type defines a type and the actual data value, which is in a union for memory efficiency. And then I can just read the values back as I need. So code in the map gen, which would have previously looked like this, now ends up looking like this. This will be less efficient, unfortunately, and I've often had to roll these lookups outside of loops myself rather than just relying on the compiler to do it. But the benefit of this system is it is just way more accessible for scripts. The scripts can just insert whatever data types it wants and also read back whatever it wants. So it's like a fully future-proof implementation and will also just make things way more flexible. For the entries like the flood fill results though, I'm gonna have to do some evil things because they're not generic data types, but I'll sort that out later. Aside from that, I also did some life admin, or ladmin as I call it. I fixed the generation text being wrong on some devices that was just annoying me. I put in a fix for pickable trees producing another tree on destruction by fire, and also giving the player the item regardless of how the tree was actually destroyed. I've properly signed off the release for this month, so we're now at alpha 0.11.0, and you can download release 10 on GitHub releases right now. Link is in the description, get over there. So feel free to send me constructive criticism slash angry messages on my Discord about why the game is broken, and make sure to tap loudly enough on your keyboard that your mum can hear from downstairs. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a fun week. Or don't.